Anyway, hey everybody, welcome back, Ashes. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. And I'm Ben. Today we're going to talk about Spider-Man Rain from 2007, written and drawn by Kara Andrews. Huh. This is... Okay, so you can't talk about Spider-Man Rain before we start talking about DC Comics, which of course did not publish this book. But it might as well have, because in DC Comics uh, they had this imprint called Elseworlds, yes. which uh, we've talked about before, and if you're not familiar with Elseworlds, back in the 80s they started doing it. If a writer or an artist had like a pitch for a story that didn't take place in regular continuity, but DC was still like, I want that story. They put it on the Elseworlds label, so you could have a story of, like, Batman hanging out with Jack the Ripper, or, uh, you know, Superman landing in Gotham City, or any other number of stories that they did that were kind of really awesome. In fact, Dark Knight Returns in and of itself is an Elseworlds story. Huh. And that's where we draw our parallels, because Spider-Man Reign was, as pitched... The Dark Knight Returnsification of Spider-Man. So it's like Spider-Man when he's like retired? And... Yes. It's yeah. it's Dark Knight Returns, but Spider-Man. That was the pitch. <laughs> and like you guys, I was like, okay, I like Dark Knight Returns. I do. Right. I like Spider-Man. Right. If you put those together, that could be awesome. And then let's, I picked it up. Let's see who his, uh, who his Superman is. Yeah. Doesn't have that. Oh. Nope. It's actually would have been really cool. Didn't do that. Spider-Man Reign is literally like 10 years later or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it can't be 10 years later because Spider-Man is fucking old. Oh, yeah? He's yeah. Like, well, he has to be old 16? like Bruce Wayne was like, old. Shit. He's like 80. He's older That's than freaking Batman was. Oh, God. Yeah. We're in New York City and uh, it's a police state which is enforced by a Gestapo-esque police force called the rain r-e-i-g-n okay and they work for this like douchebag political mayor who is just like everything's gonna be okay and he's just a smiley douche okay and he's like everything's gonna be okay and he works for this like wormy middleman type guy who is clearly like the brains behind the office right and he's the guy who's like we got to get the rain involved and we got to start this whole anti-superhero thing like kicking all the costumes out of new york because they're the problem because they keep bringing all these other costume clowns in and they have fights and it causes a lot right. of collateral damage so, standard anti-superhero exactly yeah. but it actually works and iron man and captain america don't fight or have anything to do with that yeah. oh so, wait so this isn't a thing where like the people that come in are worse no no it's just that like every well the question is like is a totalitarian state better or worse than having superheroes run around it, it, it sucks, but, like, everyone seems happy. Like It's worse. It is worse, but, like, you know. So, anyway, this is the argument. And uh, Peter Parker is an old, miserable man. And he works in a florist shop for about two pages. Well, he can't work as a photographer anymore because he can't get the shots. No. Yeah. Well, there's no more Spider-Man. Right. There's no more So, he's actually totally useless yes. as a photographer. Yeah, he is. And uh, the Daily Bugle was sold and became a television news network. Oh. Which is what they've actually done since then. Like, they've yeah, created kind of it sense. into a news network. Mm. But, uh, so we have this, like, geriatric Spider-Man who's just, he wears, he wears his little, like, outfit that he wore in, like, the 60s. Mm -hmm. and, and it fits him now because he's a geriatric and, like, he... Uh, Are you saying that Peter Parker was not cool? Yeah, I'm saying Peter Parker was never cool. <gasps> but he was always a big dweeb. Um, so anyway, he, he works at this florist shop and he fucks up this wedding order. And it wasn't really a fuck up. It's more like this young couple that looks identical to Peter Parker and Mary Jane mm -hmm. uh, are like, you fucked up the wedding because the we I said I wanted white flowers and you got me cream flowers and you have a policy that says if, we get any if you get anything wrong, it's <laughs> on us. It's like, no... Nobody has that fucking policy. Anyway, so the guy is like, Parker, you're fired! And oh, he's like, geez. oh. And then he takes these lilies away, and he's like, oh, those are coming out of your paycheck! And you're like, oh, God, he's bringing them to a grave. Oh, Here we go. But he doesn't bring them to a grave. And instead, no. uh, they get trampled by the rain, who are chasing after these kids for tagging a building. And we get this offensively, like, mutant-esque dialogue from these kids, oh. where they say, like, you stuff, you rush the stuff. I'm like a modern day Biscay. 
hurry up, bra, tag, and bag. Like, they say things that are kind Slice of... Slice and dice! Yeah, <laughs> but, but they don't cut people. They're just... In this, the mutant gang pro, like parallels are just... They're kids, and they don't accept the totalitarian government. Mm -hmm. Like, the future right. is in these children, as right. opposed to, like... These children are horrible and destroying everything. Right. So already we got like a complete opposite to the tone yeah. of that story. Um, but I'm not going to spend the whole episode like talking about parallels. We'll, we'll look at them later. But like the kids in the story are good. Okay. And they, they, they write, where did you go on the wall? I guess to Spider-Man or more to like costumed heroes. Yeah, all of yeah. the heroes. Hope is what they're asking. Sure. Yeah. And uh, so the rain is like, hey, you can't spray paint shit. I'll kick the shit out of you children. And they do, and uh, oh. they beat up one of the kids, and they oh. interrogate him, and Peter Parker's lilies get trampled, and the kid, like, gives the cops some lip, mm -hmm. and uh, Peter notices what, the, like, it was a double entendre, the kid, the guy's like, what's your name, kid? And he's like, it's Ben Dover, and Spider-Man thinks that, <laughs> yeah, and Pete thinks that's funny, and the cop didn't get it, but he sees that the old man thought it was funny, and so he's like, oh, you gave me a hard time. And then he's, like, beating the shit out of the kid. Oh, jeez. And he's like, oh, God, what have I done? And they... they oh, I shouldn't laugh anymore. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry I enjoyed one shred of hope in this book. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so they're like, don't worry, old man, after I punched you in the face and broke your nose, everything's gonna be fine. And... So Why they, did they attack him? Because he was in the way. Because he left. Because he was there. I think it was actually an accident. They were hauling off oh. to punch the kid, and they hit him in the face. I see. And then they're like, "Stand aside, citizen. You're okay." And like, as as they're carting away the kid, another kid sees Peter Parker, and they're like, "Why didn't you do anything?" And I'm like, "That's fair. If he weren't 106." <laughs> yeah. Also, he is so kids decrepit. Know that he old still needs an Uncle Ben. Young people. Right. What? He still needs an Uncle Ben. Yeah. He still needs an Uncle Ben prototype. Wait, the girl isn't saying why she didn't do something. No, she's, she's asking why he didn't do something. Yeah. Yeah, she's like, why didn't you do anything, Spider-Man? Old man. Yeah, they don't know he's Spider-Man. Old person who couldn't possibly have defeated them or yeah. stopped them in but any like, way. That's Back thing. at you, kid! It, it's a kid. Yeah. But the, yeah. The, why didn't you do anything? Yeah. You're more spry than I am. We're literally yeah. the same level of effectiveness against that person. Yeah. In that body armor. With even though I'm Spider-Man and I ought, even like when I'm old, well, I ought to be able to punch. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah but she should. doesn't know that. No, he, she doesn't. And, uh, yeah. Ah, but he does. It's right. I guess that's why she says... She's a ghost. Because the book needs him to feel guilty. Yes. <laughs> so, then we meet these, uh, these, these reporters who give you exposition. And... Uh -huh. Yeah. Like in, uh, Dark Knight. Like in Dark Knight Returns. Yep. And, uh, Kari Andrews is painfully aware that you probably have already figured out that this is a parallel to Dark Knight mm. Returns. So he names the reporters after the people who worked on Dark Knight Returns. <laughs> Okay. He literally really? calls uh, one of the reporters is named like Miller, and the other one is called like Varley or something. It's just Frank Miller wrote and uh, drew it. Lynn Varley did the uh, colors and uh, Klaus Janssen. So it's like I think it's Miller Janssen. Klaus Janssen did the inks. Mm -hmm. So it's like Miller Janssen and Varley or something like that. You're like, what? It's just like it's Dink. Strange. Little little too yeah. close. Yeah. But whatever. So no, no not Dink. <laughs> so he brings the lilies, the the the, the, the sur one surviving one, home for Mary Jane. And no, no, throughout she's the, not dead. Well, throughout the book, he's like, my wife is waiting for me, or my wife is very sick, or my wife, my wife, my wife. And then he comes home, and she's there, and she's like, and, and she's, you never see her face. It's always covered by beautiful red hair, and she doesn't say anything to him ever. And he's just like, he's just miserable and like woeful and sorrowful at her all the time she does not look old no she doesn't she must dye her hair or she's dead she's dead oh. she's a fucking ghost oh she's not a ghost she's, say, a vision. she's a vision she's a memory that's she won't talk to her it's like it's like fucking sixth sense he's like why won't you talk to me so Tell she died and he like stopped being spider-man yeah he save her or whatever. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah cause it's funny when he did that when Gwen Stacy died oh no wait oh no wait no he didn't he kept being Spider-Man. Yeah, and he was after that. He was he deliberately resent, re responsible for her death. He yeah. snapped her neck with yeah. his web on. He really killed her. And yet and somehow he found a way to keep being Spider-Man. Yeah. yeah, you see, it's because Gwen Stacy really doesn't match up to to Mary Jane. Again, Mary Jane is the love of his life and always will be. Well, it's funny because this is a year before they do One More Day, mm -hmm. and Mary Jane is the key. Like, Mary Jane is the reason he's Spider-Man and the reason he stops being Spider-Man. 
And then she is, a year later, they, and then a year later, they were like, not <laughs> at all. And I think, and and you know, they were planning it at least a year before, so you know, Kari Andrews knows that they're like, "Fuck Mary Jane." He's like, "No, <laughs> fuck, fuck you." you. <laughs> People love this story. They think it's, and you know, it's funny. Despite my re, my initial feelings about this book, rereading it, I, I was like, "Wow, this is kind of emotional." I, I found a lot of like interesting points mm. that are successful. Okay, but. The Dark Knight Returns stuff isn't, uh, and we'll talk about why that isn't. Okay. So as they're, uh, so as Spider Man is crying about, you know, Mary Jane, we meet J. Jonah Jameson, who somehow is still alive, even though Spider Man has to be in his seventies. So Holy Jonah's crap. like in his hundreds. Yes, and he looks about as good. Okay. Yeah, and what happens well, is he still has a mustache. He still has a little bit of his Hitler mustache there. And he's he's devolved into a cantankerous like preacher. Like he goes on the side of the of the street and just yells epithets oh, at the wow. rain. Like like he did when he was a newspaper publisher, yeah. but now he has no newspaper. So now right. he just goes outside and screams That's news at people. I will always yeah. be a reporter. Yes. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm journalist. A, I'm a newsman. Even if yeah. nobody's listening. Yes. Yeah. That's that's really good. Yeah, that's a cool character element for J. Joe Jameson, kind of. Uh, he goes to visit Peter Parker and he's like, you have to wake up. You have to stop being a loser and get your shit together. Well, he knows he's Spider-Man? He knows he's Spider-Man. Oh. Because he says, I've been keeping this for you for a long time. And it's a package. And, uh, he's like, when I sold the bugle, when I lost hope, I found this clearing things out. And I was mad at you for a long time, but now I understand. And he leaves it with him. And uh, Peter Parker makes no, and it's 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 maintaining this moody scene where Jemison is just this, he's this monstrous looking old person yeah. who's just like he's just smiley and phony and gross, but you know the things he's saying are the truth, mm. but they're also like, you know, you can't trust him because he's J. Jonah Jameson. Yeah, like he's always had an angle. Yes, he's and, always been a dishonest kind of guy. Like, yeah, I mean, like, well, it depends on which version you're thinking about, like, but. Spider-Man has no reason to love this guy. He's been literally smearing him yeah. in the news exactly. for like 30 years. Yeah. And now he shows up on his doorstep like, hey, you gotta fucking be Spider-Man again. And uh, I gotta get back in the business, Peter! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need you! So then uh, Jameson goes outside, because Peter doesn't talk to him. Like, he just looks <laughs> he at just him, lets at him, him yell at him, and then he leaves the package with him, and then Peter just kicks him out of the apartment. <laughs> and then, so Jameson goes outside, goes outside Peter's window, and just starts screaming at him from outside. Oh like, God. you gotta do it, Peter! You gotta be the man you are! And the rain shows up, like, alright, old man. Let's <laughs> pipe down a little bit. And then they start beating him. What the fuck is happening him. here? Oh, nice. And they start beating on him. And Peter opens... When in doubt, if you're the rain, beat someone. Just beat someone. That's all they do. Especially if they're old. Because they can't fight back. Right? That's They've literally beaten Easy. two old men in this yeah. book. The rain are so stupid. Because they're just like... First of all, they're dressed like the Wrecking Crew from Marvel, which is like a team of people who have like superpowers and they're strong and like they could like... They break shit. And they're led by the Wrecker. Who yeah. Who's like a, an enchanted crowbar. And they look like that. Because, you know... That's what that's what bad guys who are strong and thuggish look like in Marvel. So the but the rain are like have they, they have no character. They're just these are the bad guys. Mm-hmm. They beat up children and old people. Yep. Don't you hate them They're and the want most them stopped? Contemptible characters imaginable. They're not even characters. They're right. just like archetypes or, yeah. or, or or cardboard cutouts. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and so like when they show up, you know that bad things are going to happen. Mm. So Peter opens up the package and he finds his camera and he's like, "Oh crap! One of my cameras! Like I must have left it at the bugle." And it was wrapped in his Spider-Man mask. Oh. And it's the black costume mask, not the symbiote, but just like the black costume. the black costume. So okay. it's I don't know why it was the black costume. Maybe it was because uh, Spider-Man three had just come out and they were like, we got to get that black costume in places because <sighs> there were two variant. There was a variant cover for the first issue, and one was red and blue, and the other one was black. And they were really pushing that black costume in all the media at the time. But maybe it's also because it's the black costume and it's like it's a dark book and we mm. got to like really carry over the shadowy, like creepy, dark element well, of the book. Yeah. And Spider-Man is mourning. Yeah. And also like maybe they're saying that the camera has been in Jameson's possession since the 80s. Oh. Or since that era of Spider-Man. Like because that's when he last wore that costume. Spider-Man sees it and he's like, duh. And then... As the rain start beating the hell out of Jameson, Spider-Man re-emerges. 
<laughs> Whoa. But only in <laughs> as much as he has the mask. Yeah. He doesn't so put on the rest of the outfit. He has he has he no costume. It. So he's just out there in his underwear. In his underwear. In in boxer shorts. Uh, maybe two socks, but maybe just one, and a cast on his arm. Yeah, because he broke it when the rain, like, tore up his flowers and stuff. Oh. So, yeah. Okay. So he appears. Well, what does he do? He, he quickly destroys the rain. Oh, okay. Um, and as he does, he immediately starts making quips. Okay. He's making jokes at their expense, and he's just having a great time. But his internal monologue is like... I put on this mask, and suddenly I'm outside of my own body, and I hear what the mask is saying. And the mask is making jokes. And it's so offensive to me that I stop listening, and I just tune it all out. As if to say that, like, Peter Parker is this, like, timid, miserable old wretch. And Spider-Man is this jubilant, excited powerhouse. And they're two different people. Like, two different personalities. And yes. All. And when he puts the mask on, he immediately becomes Spider-Man, but he's... But Peter Parker is, like, pushed to the back of his mind. Mm. And this is where we have more Dark Knight parallels, where it's like, Bruce Wayne is this man who wants to find a good death, and there's Batman deep within him that's like, you can't fucking hide me. Like, right. I'm coming. Right. Like, like he's you... literally got, like, dual personality disorder. Exactly. <laughs> and in this, I don't know if it's even that dark. I think in this, it's more like... I'm offended by what I'm doing. Like, I don't even... I, I, I know I have to do it. It's more like auto-reflexive. Like, I have mm -hmm. to make a decision about about this terrible injustice. You know, but I don't have to like it. And Jonah's, like, snapping pictures. He's like, yeah, now I'll sell papers again. <laughs> he does not. He No, he can't do that. Mass terror. But, but, uh, but he does beat the shit out of the rain, and then he lands in front of Jonah. And Jonah's all like, I knew you'd be back! We have so much work to do! And then Spider-Man punches him in the face and knocks him across the room. Why? Because fuck Jonah Jameson, he's a dick. Uh, wow. Because, because for all the times you were a douche to me. Yeah, because Spider Man hates Jonah Jameson. Uh. But like, and thanks for bringing me back, old man. Wham. Exactly. Fuck you. And like, it, he okay. So Spider Man is like seventy five, which means Jonah must be like one hundred and twelve. So he's dead. So he's dead, right? No, he's completely fine. Uh, so that's weird because he's if if, if Peter Parker is seventy five, he looks about one hundred and nine. But let's say he's seventy five. Let's say he looks sh like shit yeah. for his age. Um, the the power of being Spider-Man has preserved his strength. Or something, right? Even though he looks like total crap. Yeah. <laughs> well, he always looked thin yes. and wiry, but right, he had but, strength. Yeah. In, He's been resilient. Like, more so than he... Like a spider, he yeah. was stronger than his physical appearance implied. Right. If even some jackbooted thug... Yes. Can break Spider-Man's arm. Yeah. Just by stepping on it. Right, by stepping on it. Yeah. Like, if he's that frail, even though he's Spider-Man. Yeah. Jameson has to be dust. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, and it's never addressed. It's not like he's like, I, I fucking pulled my punches. Right. You know, because I didn't make a clay pot out of your head. But, uh, we also see, uh, whenever Spider-Man, or Peter Parker becomes Spider-Man, he, like, goes into these visions. Yeah. And it's of those he is responsible for or mm -hmm. was responsible for and they're all dead uh and it's this is a weird dark interpretation of peter parker where he was always really reluctant to be the person he was mm. like when he's talking to aunt may aunt may's like like and it's kind of it's distilled by his interaction with each of these people mm -hmm. where aunt may is like you're my life peter and peter says what if i don't want to be your life whoa and you're like what the fuck where it's like what if i just want to be a a man but right. I have to take care of this geriatric old woman who has no one in her life. Like, wow. And then Mary Jane is like, we're going to be forever. Be we're going to be together forever because I know you'll always protect me. And he's like, what if I can't protect you, though? It's all of his insecurities. Right, right. And then Uncle Ben is like, you'd never let me die. <laughs> and Spider-Man's like, oh, but I did. Yeah, but I totally did. <laughs> and then we see Jameson and he's like, get out of here. <laughs> and it could be a response to that. Like, it could be a response to the dream where he's like, no more. No more responsibility. Get away right. from me. And like, Jameson just happens to be there. Yeah. In front of him. Right. Like, I was really trying to punch Uncle Ben. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then, but it, but it, gal <laughs> yeah. but it galvanizes Jameson into becoming Jeff Boss from New York City, who is, if you're not familiar with Jeff Boss, he runs for president every time and he's a lunatic who has like flyers about himself and on the street corner in New York City. Yeah. And uh, Jameson has like printed up flyers like they're kind of like mock daily bugle articles 
about how Spider-Man's come back. And, they're, mm. and he's got the photo of Spider-Man. So he must have taken it at some point. And it's great. And he has a big no circle over it. No, he doesn't. He's like, no, he's all pro Spider-Man now. He's not like, finally, he's back. Fuck Spider-Man and he's a menace and I hate him and he punched me in the face. No, he's like, yay, Spider-Man's back. You're all in trouble. And he's got these like little kids. You are so fucked. Yeah. And he's got these little kids and the kids who are tagging things. Now they work for Jameson. They're like the sons of Jameson. Is he paying them? Or... No, okay. but they love the truth. So he's like Fagin? Yeah. Well, yeah, but without any nefarious purposes. He's like, he's like Batman in Dark Knight Returns, where he like brings in these these kids, and they're like acolytes to his word. Right. And they're you know they're like the little newsboys, you know, yeah. they're like the newsies who are like bring in the news to the to the people. And uh, Jameson, okay. you know, he uh, they're even wearing the newsboy caps. Oh yeah, with and satchels. Yep. And that's an element in the story. So like, okay, so Jameson's got these little kids, and they help him spread the word. Okay. And they believe in the truth, and that's their story. So, uh, the, the news call, like, reports on it, they're like, oh, the old fucking Citizen Kane has returned home, and he's freaking out on the new, on the street corner, which is where we could all have expected to see him. Um, and they're aware of Jameson, like, oh, yeah, no, they were like, look at this guy, he came out, he came out from his, like, mansion and fucking freaked out. (laughs) Uh, so, but he ran away. He does have a mansion. Well, he, like, it's implied that he... he might be, like, a street person. Well, he, I think he is a street person. But, like, he has, like, a red scarf and a big, like, a great coat. So, like, my assumption is Jameson took a payout from selling the Daily Bugle and moved into his mansion far away, but still in the, like, Manhattan boroughs or whatever. Actually, mm. no, probably outside Manhattan, because I forgot to mention this whole thing where the mayor is going to push forth this initiative w- called the Web. And the Web will emanate from the top of this tower and cover new york city and become and and it will protect it in a web of like electricity or energy or something yeah that's where the story is like what you're you're gonna trap new york city inside a bubble yes so to keep out what to keep out any other like costumed problems or or world ending events New York or be... food and water. But, like, no, we're self-sustaining. They, they, they don't address it, though. Like, it's... W- just take my word for it. Being trapped in this energy bubble or that will only protect the, the Manhattan Island... Right. Is... Yeah, fuck the other boroughs. Not yeah. Brooklyn, not Queens. I, I mean, like, they don't even say it. But, like, yeah. Manhattan Island will be under this web of electricity or energy or whatever... And you'll be safe. And just trust me. Like a big dome. Like the dome in the city. Yes. For no reason. For Well, for the reasons that they give. It, it's all about, like, your protection and, like... Right. No, we have to do this for you. It, they keep saying, like, freedom isn't free. They keep, like, dropping uh, that line. Yeah. And you're like, okay, I see what you're doing. Right. Do they make references to, like, terrorism? Yes. Oh, the, oh, oh no. yeah. Oh, at one point, this like... 2007, At of one course. point, the, at the end of the book, like, everyone... Like, all of Manhattan riles up against the the establishment mm-hmm. and they're like open fire on the terrorists and the the rain is like whoa who are the terrorists they're like everyone like every citizen is a terrorist and you're like okay jesus that's enough the mayor's office gets news that spider-man's returned and so they pull the sinister six out of like cold storage which is like what they had all these costume the, the implication is that like all the costume villains are in prison Okay. And so they're like, when? So they're like, we're gonna get Electro, Scorpion, Mysterio, uh, Sandman's in there. Uh, well, thank God. And Craven the Hunter. What about the Rhino? The Rhino's not in this. Or the Vulture. The Vulture also. He's he was he was a hundred and five <laughs> in the sixties. Jameson survived. I'm sure he it's could. It's true. <laughs> Jameson's still there. The Vulture should be like he's on two hundred and twelve. I am Methuselah. Yeah, exactly. I can't die. That's my power. The mayor has no pretense of being. A good guy. Oh no! It's just like no. I am a villain. And well, I will well, use villains. The to mayor help me. is like. Well, that's why I thought like the inner six, like they're close to the. No, the no, mayor. no. The mayor's like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. What am I gonna do? And like his mustache twirling, like, like. I know. Lackey, I'll release the Spider-Man's lackey. greatest enemy. Yeah. To fight him, and they'll annihilate each other, and yeah. they'll all win. Yeah. Well, he's he's also a secret Spider-Man villain. Oh. Wormy guy. Well, like, it doesn't matter. He's, okay. He looks like no one you've ever seen because he isn't anyone you've ever seen. Mysterio. Mysterio's <laughs> in there, but he just wears a bubble head and he's like, no! Oh, okay. No, he, he, there's a cool moment with Mysterio. So he, they send the Sinister Six or Sinner, Sinner Five or whatever to go fight Spider-Man. And uh, Spider-Man is like at his 
apartment going like, pack your shit, we gotta get out of here, I, can't, I became Spider-Man, they're gonna know who it is, and he like shaves his beard, you know, but he's like, because they're gonna be looking for an old man with a beard, but maybe they won't look for an old man who looks exactly like me, but with no beard, and they've seen Boondock Saints, right? Yeah, yeah, they, they must have at that point, pack your shit, and he's just, and, and, and Mary Jane is standing in the window, just looking out, and he's like, you're not even dressed! What are you doing? You gotta get your shit! And he's just oh, like, God, God why? I'm sorry that I fucked up so bad. I fuck up all the time. It's my fault. It's all oh. my fault. I hoped when he put on the mask, he wouldn't he, see her like that yeah, anymore. No, he, he does. Would stop going crazy. No, no, no. So, uh, so then Jameson's like kids hack the Daily Bugle news channel and release just a static image of Spider-Man returned and his home address. Why? So that... To like, start some shit, I guess. Yeah. Like, so, this so, is the catalyst. Now yeah. it's on. Now it's on. And Spider-Man's like, it's not on. Nothing's on. It's, <laughs> it's off. off. And they're like, oh, now it's on. I'm gonna send him to your house. <laughs> so they fucking... So naturally, the rain goes to their house along with everyone else in Manhattan. Oh, my God. And a shitty old Spider-Man villain from the 80s called the Hypno-Hustler. The Hypno-Hustler is a really shitty Spider-Man villain. I... Sounds who, like it. Who existed in who existed in one issue? I think they brought him back like maybe once or twice, but like it doesn't matter. The reason anyone knows the Hypno Hustler is because they read Wizard Magazine back in the day. Because in the Wizard Magazine there was a, a segment called the Mort of the Month, the lamest characters in comics, and uh, the Hypno Hustler was one of them. Nice. Is the Hypno Hustler dressed like a hippo? Because if he was, that's the Hippo Hustler, and he no, he's not a character. But no, you could still have Hip No. No, the Hippo but it, Hustler. Like the Hippo is like the his Hippo eyes Hustler are... is an African American disco king. I was gonna say, does he enjoy the hustle? Yes, yes, he does. Yes, he does. He in fact plays the hustle, and uh, and it hypnotizes people. And it hypnotizes does people. Does he hustle and people out of their belongings? Yes. All right. Yes, he hypnotizes them they and hit then hustles every them. joke and reference to the name that they could. And yep. yet there is no animal theme in there, and I'm upset at that. <laughs> Well, they yeah. you don't have enough animal villains. Yeah, come on. It's literally Apparently they them. don't. They tried to do something different. Yeah, and failed. In that book, by the way, was an old Spider-Man, uh, Peter Parker, the Spectacular Spider-Man issue. I picked it up because I read that. I'm like, lol, the Hypno Hustler, and I looked through an old back issues long box at my old comic book store, and lo and behold, there it was for like a buck, and I'm like, purchased. Nice. And I read it. I'm like, damn it, because it was so stupid. Oh, it and sucks. Who to thought? <laughs> But, uh, so, anyway, the that. story is, there's this African-American disco king who, in, the, in, like, 1986, is like, disco's not dead, I'm gonna bring it back, and I'm gonna fuck over people. He goes to, like, like, like... Clubs? Clubs. Okay. And he performs, like, he, he books them, like, as an actual musician. Oh. And they're like, cool, thank you for playing. And rather than, like, earn money legitimately, because he's... A hip, uh, he, he's a disco king in 1986 and if he's able to actually sell a show that is a feat in of itself yeah just do yeah, that because disco is dead it's been dead for a long time now but he has these siren backup singers who sing at a frequency that hypnotizes the people along with this music that he plays right. whoa 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 he doesn't do the hypnotizing he has uh, like a headset that protects his ears from the hypnotic songs of his siren backup singers and the musical his sirens yes and the and the music that he plays out of his boombox uh spider-man puts web balls in his ears and then beats the shit out of the hypno hustler the end in this the hypno hustler for no reason is like the costumes are back yeah and he's an he's an <laughs> old man he puts on his hypno hustler oh costume and he put and, and all these people show up to peter parker's house so he plays the music and the rain's like get the hell out of here man you got your costume means you got to die and they start coming at him and then he starts playing the hypno music and then they start dancing uncontrollably because oh that's what happens God. when you're under the hypno hustler's control <sighs> but then the batteries die in his boom box and they kill him what in a hail of gunfire yes wow yeah so as long as his music is going, he's safe. Yes. So Spider-Man's like, oh, I'm responsible for the Hypno Hustler. If I didn't come back, he wouldn't be dead. He doesn't even know he was there. Oh. Okay. It's it's That's like... great. It's like it never even happened in the book. Because <laughs> who cares? <laughs> yeah. So that was just a fun little moment. Because like you, that's that's for the fans. Yeah. yeah. Like well, it, it really is for the yeah. Hey, you remember Hypno Hustler? No. Well, fuck him. Sure. Or if you do, ha ha ha, remember that issue? Yeah, because I do. <laughs> like, it's so weird. I was like, thanks? Like, I remember that character you because I literally have the issue for him. 
what the hell? So anyway, uh, but the people are like, holy shit, the Rangers shot that old man yeah. for dancing. Ah, oh, but he was dancing provocatively. Yeah. No, it was just, it just, you know. So Peter Parker's like, what's all that commotion outside my window? So he goes out to the window and they're like, there he is! <laughs> And he's like, oh, he's, no! Is he still just in the mask and nothing? No, he's just, he's dressed as Peter Parker. Oh. oh. Um, so he's like, oh, crap. And then, so, like, then they're like, oh, there he is, man! And they start getting their guns out, and they're ready to fire. And the issue ends with the Mary Jane ghost smiling. And then Spider-Man shows up. He actually winds up, like, having the full black costume. Oh. So he puts it on and just beats the shit out of these fucking rain people. Is there any... Any information as to how he got the costume? He must have like had it squirreled away somewhere. Yeah, like the yeah. black costume is a thing where uh, when Venom first showed up, he doesn't meet Peter Parker for the first time. He meets Mary Jane and scares the living shit out of her. And as such, she hates the black costume. Mm. And so when Peter Parker tries to wear it, she's like, "Da!" Like I associate yeah. home invasion and right. alien <laughs> monsters with that. Yeah, don't wear that. Yeah, around don't me. wear that around me anymore. Yeah. So he doesn't. And in fact, like. He throws it away. Actually, I think he burns it in that issue. But so she's smiling. So she's smiling because he's coming back. Because yeah. her, like the man she loved, the, like Spider Man. The Spider Man. I never loved you, Peter. No, it's, I loved Spider Man. It, thank <laughs> God. That's actually Black Cat. Black Cat was like, when well, Black yeah. Cat first finds out that he's Spider Man, she goes, "Put it back on!" Oh my God! You're some kid. No, no, no. That oh, was that was an Ultimate Spider Man. She was some kid. Oh. And Ultimate Spider Man is amazing because it's like a full like grown a woman who's like. So into him. And he takes out the mask. She's like, you're like, what, 13 years old? And she throws up on his dick. And you're like, what? What? Yeah. And everyone's like, holy shit. And Jameson's like, yay! And then the Sinner, the, the sinner 5 or 6 show Whatever. up. Yeah. And Craven takes his huge hunting knife and stabs one of Jameson's children through the back, through the stomach with it. Oh my god. Yeah. And... Gurgle! <laughs> And, yeah. and holy the, shit! And they start like just just making quick work of everybody. Does the rain turn on these people? Yeah, the rain is like we're facilitating the Sinner Stick Six's like, you know, attack here. Wait, they're facilitating it like, like helping them along. Yes, because like okay, oh, I think shit. I think actually the uh, Craven stabs the the, the hacker kid. Oh, because he's like I gotta kill the hack and get out of here, and and Craven's like don't let him see it, like let him see what's happening. They wanted to show. Here it is. And so the the Sinister Six like just start murdering people left and right and kicking the shit out of people. And uh, they beat the hell out of Spider-Man, take off his mask, and then uh, it, it looks like all hope is lost. But then these huge four mechanical arms show up and kick the shit out of everybody and steal Spider-Man and leave. Oh, wow. And you're like, uh-oh. <laughs> uh-oh that's awesome that's, that's awesome fucking cool. and you have this really cool image of like doc ock just like grabbing spider-man and leaving doc ock looks like he's dead he is dead what the arms are like artificially intelligent and and they're dragging his corpse around yes oh, oh. So the news is like so that was a shit show um we're gonna step up the the starting of the of the rain of, of the web of oh, the web yeah and, uh, and that's gonna, we're gonna turn that on, like, uh, the mayor's gonna turn it on, like, tonight. Because clearly, we need it. We need this. Yeah, web. like, this was the instigation. This web would have fixed everything. Right, exactly. So, Doc Ock drags Spider-Man's body to the, to the grave site of everybody. Because, for some reason, Doc Ock was buried in the same place that Uncle Ben, Aunt May, and Mary Jane were buried in. That's, there's only one seminary. Kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, all, in all of Manhattan. And Peter Parker is basically like, let me die. <laughs> <laughs> like, I failed everyone that matters to me. This is fine. Like, I'm good. Let, let me go. Let me go. I'm yeah. done. I'm done being alive. Uh, meanwhile, Jameson gets picked up and not killed by the Sinister Six, and they get brought into the mayor's office. Okay. And <laughs> Jameson fucking stabs the mayor in the neck. Oh my god. But holy shit. Yeah, he doesn't get he doesn't kill him, but he does stab him in the neck. Did he do it with a pen? No. I wish he did it with Damn a pen. Damn it. That would have been fucking awesome. No, they they uh, they threaten him with a knife and he takes it. Like he grabs the blade, takes it away, and then stabs the mayor in the neck. Oh. And then he attacks the the aide. There are a lot of gurgles in this book. Yeah, yeah, well everyone's being choked or bleeding to death or, you know, our corpse is being brought back to life. Jameson is like I'm the mayor now. <laughs> Jameson's like, you're the problem which is the mayor's aide, and he stabs the mayor's aide, 
and his arms just get lost into black goo. Oh. And you're like, oh no, the mayor's A is Venom. Cool. And uh, he's like, How'd you, so did you figure it out? Like, when did you figure it out? He's like, I kind of had a suspicion, but I didn't really know, but I'm a newsman. Like, I, I had a theory, and I had to test it. That's why I needed to be brought here. Oh. Oh. So, uh, okay. yeah, he's like, I just needed to know. And so the so Doc Ock is choking out Spider Man, or rather his arms are, and that's and now that Spider Man is here at the gravesite of Otto Octavius, Otto's like fucking melodrama monologue audio file starts playing, and it's oh like, Hey Spider Man, it's me, your brother in arms. I'm dead, but my arms were always looking for you. And when he came back, the arms oh, turned back on. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. And uh, or or they've always been looking. For right. Him. Yeah. The they just, finally found just, him. Like this the corpse. Like this, it's like a like an urban legend. Yeah. Like this corpse is like crawling, just crawling around the city for ten years looking for him. So finally he's oh. here, and you're like, yeah. That must smell. Yeah, it's horrific. It digs up everybody from Spider-Man's past and like throws Mary Jane's casket into the air. What the, what the fuck? fuck? And you're like, yikes. Jesus, book. Yeah. Come and on. Can we just call this Marvel Max already? Yeah, yeah well, because nothing, like, it's it's horrifying, but, like, nothing, nobody curses, there's no, ha there's no, like, penetration, <laughs> and, like, whatever. There have been two things of penetration. Yeah. A little kid got stabbed <laughs> through the chest. Yeah, but you know, no blood in that, so in that shot. And Jameson, true, like, no necked the mayor. That's true, but and there was a lot well, of that's blood fine. There. There's lots of that stuff on TV. Okay. I've seen more violence in an episode of Castle. <laughs> okay, yes. But I'm just saying, like, now we've got corpses yes, being dragged we got, up. We got, we got, there was a dead body being brought around, like... Dragged around Walked by around New York City by four mechanical arms. It's true. Uh, so then we get the, 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 like, what the hell happened to Mary Jane story. Right. Like, Thank we God. Just explain what Can happened we just explain what already? happened to Mary Jane? Uh, sh the, the, the flashback we get is her in a, in a hospital bed dying. And Peter Parker being like, I'm sorry. Like, I can't believe that you're here, and it's all my fault. And then some sirens go by, and he's like, I'll be back. And he leaves, and when he comes back, she's already dead. Oh, hey. Hey. I hey. like this part of the story. So. Yeah? No. So, when, yeah. And so when Peter Parker comes back, Mary Jane has already died of cancer. Oh. oh. And, and her body's oh. gone. He's missed it all. Because he's radioactive. Yeah, he reveals no. by hugging her. Like he's Spider Man is basically like crying at this point, holding the corpse of Mary Jane. He's like, "I'm the one who did this to you. The doctors couldn't figure out why you were riddled with cancer. It's because every ounce of my bodily fluids was irradiated." <laughs> oh, oh Don't my say God. it like that. Ew. Yeah. You should read the Wikipedia on this. Yeah, his radioactive spider semen. Yep. From all the repeated times ah! he had sex, he was just <laughs> filling her with radiation. Yep. <laughs> That is... Yeah! My spider spunk! Yeah. Just completely destroyed her. Yep. From the inside out. Yeah. They literally say she was riddled with it. Cancer? Yeah. Like Which every... is like, good for them. Yeah. Right? Well, that's, that's this is the part... Sucks. That's the most infamous part of the book, is like, his yep. spider they semen just, killing her. They also fucking just stole that from Watchmen, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. oh, you caused cancer... The same disease to the people you love. Yeah. Like your first love. Like, fuck. Yeah, yeah. but that was a lie. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah that was a lie. It was, yeah, a, that lie. was a lie. And, but, and this is just and one this, person. She yeah. could have coincidentally gotten cancer. Right? No. Yeah, how come Mary Jane... I mean, some people get cancer. Yes, but Mary no Jane cause, got it. No how come Aunt May never got cancer? Because he didn't have sex with Aunt May! May. So we get I'm that revelation. Go because I know how the rest of this guy, Yeah. So, so right. anyway. Thank you for... Oh, God. Yeah, so he... Yeah, so... Radioactive spider semen is what makes Mary Jane die, and so he like. I'm he... sorry, I plowed you. Yeah, why? So why he... didn't I just use a condom? Yeah, like the whole time. Wait, did they have a kid? <laughs> no, no, no. Like... That would have been a radiation baby. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, thank God. It's it's cells. It would have been made of radiation. It would have been an finally type. pregnant. It could oh, have it been a superhero. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it, it's awful. Uh, so like, but by the way, the the flashback to her dying in her hospital bed, he's. You know, sitting there being like being young Peter Parker, and like there are sirens going by, and she says, "Go, like just go." Right. And he's like, oh, and he's like sad that she like hates him, and then he leaves. Does she to be Spider Man? And then after he reveals this horrible plot, uh, her ghost or her his vision of her 
or whatever finishes her sentence and she's like i wasn't gonna say go leave me mm. i was gonna say go get him tiger Mm. like also right like an encouragement yeah you're my hero i also don't want you to watch me die right that too like you but, can't do anything but because he's spider-man is like a complete like basket case and he is defined by like perceived His failures, failures. Right, right. so naturally he would assume that everything is a negative against right. him so like all right venom reveals that he's like yeah i fucking took over the mayor's like blah 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 and i'm in charge of everything and the web is of course supposed to keep everybody in but it's also like i really thought the web would be electro yeah that'd be cool but no electro is actually one of the guys that fights spider-man uh and he doesn't do anything uh so venom reveals that like you know i the only thing that i've grown like because you know jameson says like oh you like you haven't really changed much and he's like no i've only gotten more hungry and you're like what the fuck does that mean and he's like, yeah, the, the web is designed to keep everyone in. And it's also, I guess, an interdimensional portal? And so when the web is activated, everyone's like, yay, the web is activated. But then, like, all these symbiotes start pouring out of the oh web. Oh, my God. And then start eating everyone. Does Venom meet people? What? Now he does. Because I assumed if he got more hungry, he would just contain all the food source. He'd be right. Like, no, I just... I want to keep you all here so I can eat. Yeah, well, like, no, I not bring symbiotes. Yeah, well, like, I, I, they're, they're either, like, all extensions of him. Some piece of... No. <laughs> There's no imprinting. <laughs> Just that the, some of them might be parts of him. Like, or, of mind kind of thing. Or they yeah. all, there was only one symbiote ever and just... Yeah, and they all just... Into... Exactly. But in any case, all these symbiotes just start blasting out of the web and start absorbing everyone just the black colored symbiote right yes. it's not the there's weird no carnages multi- or anything no no toxins it's just because like that planet had a whole slew of them. well it depends on which planet you're talking about like it, by this point they've never revealed where symbiotes came from okay and the okay. retcon tells you that re- symbiotes are actually good and it's only through being connected to spider-man and fighting bad guys and dealing with humanity that it goes insane so the Venom symbiote's actually the only bad... Well, we don't find Ven- that out until after this. Until after this book, book even. clearly shows them as completely malevolent and... And, and like, high stomach. Evil. Well, yeah. good, because this is yeah. terrifying. Okay. This should so be. anyway, the, the Venoms start eating everybody, and... Uh, so Spider-Man, like, climbs into Mary Jane's coffin, and he's like, I'm done. Uh, wow! Well, that's it. Yep. And I know, I know. Jameson brought me back so I could serve a purpose. Yep. But then I got beaten up a little bit. Yeah. And then by a corpse. I, well, I got beaten. No, I got beaten up by like five guys. Yeah. And then a, a the zombie cor- came and got me. Came and got me. Ripped up my dead girlfriend's yep. or dead wife's corpse. Uh, corpse. And you know, it yelled at me for a while. Yep. And now I'm just gonna die. Yeah. Fuck it. I'm what done. A, what a depressing this is book. So fucked up. Yeah. Um, the children, the news people, like the news kids, the newsies, I guess, mm-hmm. uh, one, like the main news kid, who's like this girl, she escapes the Venom Horde. Is she the one that said, why didn't you do anything? Yeah. She mm-hmm. escapes the Venom Horde and she runs away, at, well, by the way, while watching all of her friends be eaten by Venoms. And she gets to the newsroom where all the other kids are. Yeah. And she's like, we gotta do something! And they're like, yeah, but, like, if we do something and people see our faces, then our families will be destroyed. And he's like, she's like, no, not if we wear our masks. And so, like, they all make, like, bandanas and they wear, like, ski masks and stuff. So, like, the children put on the masks and they go and they bring hope to the streets. But, like, how could they fight these fucking monsters? (laughs) But, like, (laughs) they do actually explain it because part of the reason, part of the building of the web, they were like, if there's anything on top of our buildings that are made of, like, metal they have to be removed. So, like, church bells and other things that make noise have to be taken down. Like, small price to pay for freedom! That was, like, the legitimization earlier in the book. Mm -hmm. But, as we know, in the beginning of Venom's career... Freedom literally cannot ring. Yes. Freedom cannot (laughs) ring. Uh, But we also know that Sonics pose a threat against symbiotes. Right. And the first time that Spider-Man ever defeated Venom was with a church bell. Yeah. And Jameson, who suspected that Venom was in charge all along, Mm -hmm. had told the Newsies that the bells were going to, like, ring and bring about salvation. And the kid... And they had, like, a bell in the newsroom where they were hiding. And the kids were like, I thought it was just some fucking, like, poem or something he was saying. But no, they're actually... 
bells like these are the and so they they start hitting the bells and the bells keep the symbiotes away and so the kids are not eaten by symbiotes and so like the kids also go deaf <laughs> right but they keep hit, hitting the bells and so like they're hitting bells all over the place and like so it's starting to like piss off the venom symbiote and spider-man hears the bells and he's like when i buried you mary jane i buried spider-man mm-hmm. and so as the bells are ringing spider-man blasts out of the coffin wearing his red and blue costume okay like he literally put the costume in the oh, casket okay. with mary jane oh, okay that's and cool. so he blasts out of the co- out of the casket wearing his spider-man costume and then he goes to the to the uh the tower to fight venom filled with the dead funk of his ex-wife yeah or rather late wife well dead wife yeah yeah the, the rain is still working for venom here because they're like yes he's why? Well, After because the venoms come down and start eating everybody, you think they'd be like, "Oh, we're no, on that's the wrong side." <laughs> that's when they're like, "Well, so who are the bad guys?" And they're like, "The, the regular people." And some of them are like, "What?" So the it's, rain actually is. It's worse. They become ineffectual. Uh, like some of them are, are enforcing, and some of them aren't. Uh, and the like leader I don't know how to do anything except except what like what I'm told exactly. Yeah, okay. The leader of the rain, like the task force leader, is Sandman. Okay. And so he's like, "Ah!" And he's like, "This is wrong." And that's kind of carrying over his character because Sandman was a Spider-Man villain, but, like, reformed. Mm-hmm. So Spider-Man goes to the tower to fight the fucking bad guys. The Sinner Six is brought back to the tower to, like, fight him. And Spider-Man kills them all. Oh. Wait, well, like, right. straight-up murders? Yeah. Yeah, uh, Hydro-Man and Electro team up to fight Spider-Man. That is the worst combination. And then Spider-Man's like, you guys are not too bright. And he fucking webs Electro's foot and fucking pulls it and knocks Electro into Hydro-Man. And then we see, through the electricity, a skeleton. So he's dead. And then Spider-Man webs, I guess, enough of Hydro-Man. So like, all you see is like a web ball with like a drip. So you're like, okay, he's contained. And that guy's fucking dead. Something that Spider-Man would never do. But okay, now he's... I guess because he's old and sad. Hey, my wife is dead. Fuck you. Fuck everybody. So then he's like, he okay. fights Scorpion. And Scorpion's like, I've been fucking new and improved. I got all kinds of enhancements. And he goes, hey, can you fly? And Scorpion's like, what? And then he fucking just kicks him out the window. Oh. And Scorpion just nice. falls fucking to his death. Falls to his death. <laughs> That's great. All that right. is the best death so far. Yes. Uh, yeah. And um, and there you go. Oh, and he fights Craven. Oh, he fights Mysterio. And Mysterio becomes uh, uh, Mary Jane. And she's like, you let me die. And you fucking ruined me. And, uh, and he says, shut up, you bitch. And then just punches her in the face. And cracks Mysterio's like glass helmet and he's like the last thing you should have done was become my dead wife well because i fucking yes. hate her right because i'm mad at, because i've been so like indebted to her uh. ghost forever that like i need to cut loose and you're like what i needed to finally just hit her just once hit her yeah and not, then not clone me real me yeah real him did hit her too this is getting really this weird is, this, so right. then mysterious uh oh by the way the little girl she's, oh yeah she's, she's Sandman's daughter or something? She is Sandman. Oh. Yeah. What? Like, she's a part of him. Like in that episode of Batman, where Clayface made, like, a little version of himself and sent him out. And when it got too far, it forgot who it was. In this one, like, Sandman made a little person out of sand. And and it it has a mind of its own. And it gains sentience. And then, like, it dies. Okay. Or it's, it's like gets shot and it thinks it's dying and Sandman just like basically reabsorbs it into himself. Oh. And, but he's also sad. Or it's his daughter and she also has sand powers and he absorbs her into himself. I like that version. Either way, what the hell. But yeah. Okay. So uh, <laughs> Spider-Man's last <laughs> fight is against... the epic conclusion here. So Spider-Man's last villain is uh, Craven, who is alive for no reason. Because <laughs> it's before yeah, they brought it back uh, to life. Okay. By the way, and they make no attempt to explain it or even say like, you know, I'm Craven's son. Like, nope, just nope. I'm Craven and I got fun, and I'm younger. Too. Craven's back. Craven's back, baby. Craven never left in this book. Yeah. <laughs> Craven takes Mysterio's broken helmet and he's like, and he breathes in the the the, the gas because Cariandrus forgot that Mysterio wasn't Scarecrow, and uh, it's just illusion gas and not fucking fear toxin. But anyway, it works like fear gas, and uh, so. Craven's like, I fucking, I'm ready for the greatest prey of all time, and I'm gonna bring it, and I bet your mask filters out some of this fear gas, so... And Spider-Man takes his mask up, and he fucking breathes it into, 
and then fucking Craven becomes Aunt May and starts running at him and says all these horrible things like you fucking left me for that redheaded witch and then she beca- oh and then my God. he becomes like, Uncle Ben he's like you let me die and he's like Mary Jane he's like I never loved you I felt bad for you and he's like the di- like, and I'm seeing all my greatest fears coming at me the difference is I've been letting him yell at me for the last thirty fucking years. I wonder what you see, Craven. And Craven sees this giant fucking rhino, and it just like tramples him. And you're what? like, "What?" But what really happened? Spider-Man kicked his ass, like a rhino would. Yeah. He gored him with his horn. <laughs> yeah. He gored him, but he really just punched through his fucking stuff. <laughs> no, he just beats him, and okay. uh, and then Venom shows up, and he's like, "Blah, I was in charge." It was me the whole time. And Spider-Man's like, why? And he's like, because I'm... Because you abandoned me. You stole me from the stars and you brought me to this shitty planet and then you left me to die. I'm the one responsibility that you shirked. Oh. It's all about you. And it's all about the responsibility that you wasted on me. Okay. And Spider-Man's that's, like, fuck. That sucks. Yeah. So then they start fighting and Venom is like bringing all of himself to help with the fight. Yeah. So all the Venoms show up and, like, become this Venom monster, and Spider-Man's like, whoa, I'm gonna die. Cool. And then Sandman shows up, and he's like, the only way that they got me and Electro and everybody to do what they wanted was by putting bombs in their bodies that they threatened to blow up Okay. if they didn't do what they wanted, like fucking Suicide Squad. Uh, the difference is I'm made of fucking sand. So he, like... He walks through Spider-Man, and Spider-Man is like left with the detonator oh. from Sandman. And there's enough dead fucking bomb-infused bodies in this building to level it. So he hits the fucking button and levels the building and kills all the fucking symbiotes. And the, uh, the web. And the web. Breaks the web from that building. Exactly. How does, how does a crushed building kill a symbiote? It's, it's the explosion, you see. The explosion from the building. I thought it was the Sonics that would do it. Fire and Sonics. Well, there was a lot of noise. Oh, you see fire too. Oh, yeah, that was also true. And from the explosion, but yeah, fire and Sonics. Are the I mean, there would be a shockwave from the explosion, but there would not like not, not the same thing as a Sonic. No, 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 no. But the explosion, the fire explosion from all, all right. these bodies, blew up and killed all of the symbiotes. All right, so it kills them. Yeah. You know what I would have loved? What's that? I would have loved if Venom had given Mary Jane cancer like it. What? No, no. It, it was the thing that it was radioactive. Like, oh, the... or, or if it fed radioactive shit to her. Like right. some something where it's like, you left me for her. Oh. So I killed, so you I ab- killed you ab- her. You abandoned me yeah. because she didn't like me. Right. She saw a side of you that she didn't like and mm-hmm. it was me and you left me for her. So I fucking killed her. Yeah. That's not bad. That's that cool would have been great. Yeah, but then he wouldn't hate himself. Spider-Man shouldn't yeah. hate himself! No, he totally has to. No, he has to. That's what he is. He's a neurotic, lunatic, asshole kid. He's a man-child who can't fucking keep his shit together. That's what Spider-Man is. That's why people love him. That's why people love him, because he's such a loser. Bo- that's what this book is saying. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, so then J. Jonah Jameson gets his fucking news program back, and uh, Spider-Man's got a lot of work to do. The end. Uh, is Spider-Man dead? No, he made it. That ending He jumped out of the way. Oh, I see. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, his spider sense saved him. Yeah. yeah. He got out just in time. All yeah. right. One of the things that I noticed for this book was Dark Knight Returns works because it it legitimized Batman in the public eye. Yeah. It was a story that only works because it was about Batman. Mm-hmm. Dark Knight Returns is not a formula that you apply to characters. No. It is not like putting Batman in A Christmas Carol. Like, <laughs> it is not a, a formula. Right. Or a, or a mask. Right. It, it, it is a story, story that a guy yeah, wrote. that is integral to the Batman character. It literally hits on all these very, very important beats for the character. You can't then just say, and now we're going to do it for a person from not only another fucking, another superhero, but from another entire publishing company yeah. with a completely different tone. If yeah. they mean it to just mean we're going to put him in a future where everything sucks and he has no hope. Right. Well, or it's That's, just like after that, he retires, I guess. It's, but like... They, but they have all kinds of other references. They too, have all so these like, other references. There's the children. There's the the dark, uh, you know, change in the costume to change beats. There's the yeah. resurrected villain that like battles. So it's not like organic or authentic. No, it's like, it's it's, it, it's just derivative. There's a there's a really really cool story in here, mm-hmm. and occasionally comes out. All the parts that you were like, whoa, are legitimately cool moments, and they're the least Dark Knight Returns moments. Mm-hmm. They're the there's the mo- they're the moments that make. Spider-Man who he is. They're the moments that work for the character. 
because Spider-Man is such a strong character, like those char- those those moments or, or elements will come out whether you want it to be something else or not. Yeah. And that's when it works the most, when it organically like comes out. My favorite part was Doc Ock. Doc Ock was that a crazy was, idea. That but... was so visceral. Yeah, it, like, what the hell? Like, it's like, that... holy shit, but that's crazy. Cool idea, I've never thought of it. Yeah. That, like, yeah. A little too creepy for me. But... It's very creepy. But it's like, incredibly, but, like, that's what I love it about is, it. Yeah. It is cool. It caused such a reaction. And yeah. I like the interpretation of Venom. Being mm-hmm. like, I, like, you keep talking about power and responsibility. You brought my power. Or me. Yeah, I am power. And you were, and you abandoned you took me. No responsibility. Yeah, you took no responsibility for me. And not only that, like, and he could have said, like, and you made, I made carnage, like, I made other things out of me that were worse. And you, and you still were like, we gotta beat that bad guy. Like, you're the, it's fucking your fault, man. And it's like that's fair. That's a fair point to make. Mm-hmm. Interesting story, but for me, I've never really been a fan. Yeah. Like, it seems like it's hard to. And it's weird because, like. I am a fan of the character, and this speaks to a lot of those elements. Like, I'm like, oh, like look at the Hypno Hustler. Like, right. look at the Venom interpretation. Look at Doc Ock. Like, look at Aunt May and Mary Jane. Like, Mary Jane is is the is the is the emotional crux of the book. She's the thing that's like, I always believed in you. Like, I'm the thing. Like, I am the proportionate reaction to your self loathing. It's like that's a cool interpretation of that character. Yeah. Like, way to get that. Not one hint of Gwen Stacy in this book. Mm-hmm. And it's so easy and so obvious to do. Yeah. But nah. No. No, it, it was my greatest failure. Yeah. It's one of his greatest fa- It's his greatest failure as Spider-Man. It's his so greatest... great. I can't put it in. Otherwise, I, I'll never come back. <laughs> I don't even know. Like, it's... Like, yeah. But it's a cool story and I don't know. It's weird. There are cool elements. It's cool elements, but yeah. like, I don't... I think it needed another pass. Like, I think you need to just refine it a little bit. You could have brought this down to three issues. Or maybe it could have been a little longer. Yeah. And you just extrapolate on That's some That's the thing. Stuff. Like, it either needed to be a little shorter or a little longer in order for it to work better. Mm-hmm. It works, and people love this book. Like, a lot. Really? And I'm like, why? Like, I get, like, it's a Cause talking there's, point. Because there's shit you have never seen or thought of. That's yeah, the thing, but, Spider-Man like... Spider-Man kills people. Right, because Spider-Man kills people, or zombies come back from the dead and fucking pull them into a graveyard and uproot his dead wife like there's so much weird shit in here that you've never seen before but like should i have seen it ever yeah no i didn't need that or does it work for another character like like would if it was daredevil it would have been a little better i think because daredevil is a dark character yeah who despite his darkness finds hope spider-man is in essence an upbeat character but whatever. Fire and Rain by Kari Andrews. Check it out in the description box below this video. I've got it for sale uh, through Amazon. You can pick it up. It's great to some hey, people. there are some great images in here. There's some crazy images in here. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah. But there you have it. We'll see you guys next time in another this episode of Back Issues. Yeah. Thanks a lot for watching. <laughs> I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. And I'm Ben. So long.